Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Welcome to a new episode of Let's Talk Dementia. I'm glad you've chosen to join me today. So today we're going to talk about the acronym NEURO, N-E-U-R-O. Well, I recently read an interview with Mr. Dan Buettner, and Dan Buettner um, is the founder of the Blue Zones. And the Blue Zones are those six areas in our world where folks live where predominantly there are more folks who live past the age of 100, and they have much lower instances of heart disease and dementia. Now, I find that very interesting. So, of course, I've read the book, and our company has become a Blue Zone participating organization, and we are following the teachings that go on in that part of the world, as, or those parts of the world, as far as how we take care of our body, specifically what we eat, and a lot of other things. Well, Doc, uh, Mr. Dan Buettner had an interview with Drs. Dean and Aisha Shirzai, and I'm not sure I've said that name correctly, but husband and wife, and I picked up a few tips from that interview that I wanted to share with you because it goes right along with what I believe um, is important. I'll tell you, studies are being done that show that a healthy lifestyle can reduce your risk of getting Alzheimer's by anywhere from 90 to 97%. Now, folks, that's huge. We've got to pay attention to what this research is showing us. And let's take this stuff seriously. You can think, oh, I don't want to eat like that, or I don't want to exercise, or I don't want to do, I don't want to do. And I'll tell you what you don't want to do. You don't want to have Alzheimer's or a lot of the other diseases that the type of lifestyle that most Americans are maintaining will lead to that many other diseases and those diseases open up the door for Alzheimer's. It's a bad basket of junk. So neuro is the acronym they came up to sum up uh, what a healthy lifestyle looks like. N-E-U-R as the neurons in your brain. Now you know I love some acronyms. I have the acronym that I teach in my book and when I go to speak B-E-A-D like beads on a necklace with a T on the end which makes it spell nothing but it stands for the activities of daily living, which are bathing, eating, ambulating, dressing, and toileting. So I like acronyms. So neuro, well, that was just right up my alley. So N is the first letter, and that stands for, guess what? Nutrition. We need to be looking at eating a whole food, plant-based diet. We need to eat those things God made for us to eat that did not come from the factory, did not come in a bag or a box, did not come with an ingredient list that you can't pronounce. Let me tell you about ingredient list. So today I was doing some shopping at Aldi, because you know I love me some Aldi. And there's not one near me, and I was going into another town that has an Aldi, and I went, er, let me pull in there and stock up. Well, they had um, plant-based pasta. Hmm, dried pasta. Thought I bet that's got some junk in it. And it was, they had black bean pasta and lentil pasta. Guess what the ingredients in the black bean pasta were? Black beans. That's all. The lentil pasta, the only ingredients were lentils. You know that went in my buggy. So that whole food plant-based eating. If you think, okay, I'm not giving up my hamburgers and my chicken, well, then make sure the meat that you are eating um, is uh, grain-fed, grass-fed. Make sure that the chicken you're buying wasn't given hormones so that the chicken breast would be large, that there's no antibiotics, given to the animals for which you are now partaking of antibiotics that you don't need and that are not good for you. But think about making your meat your condiment for your meal. I found that real interesting because I do love me some bacon. I never eat strips of bacon, but I love to have a salad and have some bacon bits in it. Tonight, I'm going to be making a broccoli salad instead of mayonnaise for the very first time. I will be making it with Greek yogurt as the base for my dressing. And yeah, there will be some bacon bits in it, or on it actually, but it's a condiment. It's not the main ingredient. So think about in for nutrition. E is exercise. Well, we know exercise protects the body in lots of ways. The stronger you build your muscles, then if you fall, your bones are protected. Duh! That's wonderful news, right? But did you know the more you exercise, 
the better your brain is protected. And that's very important. When we exercise, we lower our blood sugar. That's very important because there's a direct connection, not this kind of connection, a direct connection between Alzheimer's and diabetes. We don't want diabetes. Kick it to the curb, right? And one way we can do this is with good nutrition and exercising. It's very important. One study showed an intensive aerobic regimen reduced one's risk of developing Alzheimer's by as much as 40%. I have heard that number to be 50% actually. Another study showed a resistance training program, lifting some weights. You know, you can do that in the pool. You can get water weights in the pool and underwater push those weights. Oh, yeah. Or pool noodle. That's resistance training. Um, so anyway, a study showed a resistance training program for six months reversed cognitive impairment among 47% of patients who were already in the beginning stages of dementia. Holy cow. How crazy is that? So N is nutrition. E is exercise. You, well, baby, that's unwind. We're going to chill out. We're going to take it easy. Now, in the Blue Zones teaching, if you already consume wine, then that's a good thing to do in the evenings, to have a glass of wine and relax. I can't drink wine. I have an ulcer that I'm fighting. And believe me, my changes in nutrition, they're going to change this belly of mine. And I'm not going to have that, but I still won't drink wine. I think it's pretty nasty. Now, that does not mean we should drink lots of wine. No, it's probably just a cup. But it also doesn't mean that we only unwind with wine. We need to unwind. We need to learn to unwind and to handle the bad stress that comes into our life. You know, the um, there's a hormone called cortisol that's in your body, and it's important, and you need it, especially if you're ever chased by a bear. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's that fight or flight hormone, so that if you were chased by a bear, and there are bears in my neighborhood. I don't walk at night because of that. That's just crazy. Um, and panthers, don't forget that, and alligators, but I digress. But if you were chased by a bear, that hormone would release in great amounts and you would be jacked up and you could run faster than you could probably right now if I say get up and run. That's good. It's not good for cortisol to be on full force just during your day. And that's the way the American public, and not just the American Americans are, I think it's true, in many, many, many cultures, we're always on, we're always going, we're on our laptop, on our computers. What's those things called? Phones iPads and our computers, our laptops, whatever. We're always on a screen or we're multitasking. We're doing several things at once. Multitasking turns on cortisol. Cortisol being high keeps you from relaxing. Well, so now I learned yesterday that multitasking would do this. I'm always telling my husband that I don't know how the world ever got to be where it is with it being run by so many men because a man can only do one thing at a time. And a woman, she will pick up the baby with one hand and have her purse in the other hand and two bags of groceries and kick the door open with her foot. A man will walk in with his cup, have to set it down and go back outside to get a bag of groceries. I don't understand it. But do you know what? Cortisol is not crazy in his body either. And the woman's cortisol is just up here and all jacked up. And that's bad for the brain. You got to unwind. You got to chill. Um, an interesting statistic that I heard um, is if a woman wants to relax, she should spend time with her girlfriends. If a guy wants to relax, he should spend time with a female. Neither, there's never a time when a man should relax by spending time with another man. It doesn't relax them as much as spending time with a female. Go females! Yeah! N is neuro. E is exercise. U is unwind. R is restorative sleep. Oh, yes. We love some good sleep, don't we? Sleeping seven to eight hours a day, dreaming sleep, you know, where you go to sleep and you dream crazy crap that you don't want to tell nobody about. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. But when you're asleep, your Roomba vacuum cleaner, you know that, that robot vacuum cleaner that works when you're gone? Well, you got one in your brain, and when you go to sleep, it gets in there and it goes to work and it removes from your brain dangerous toxins. So sleep is important. We know that sleep apnea can increase your chances of dementia by as much as 70%. It's because your brain's not being cleaned out. It's important. You know what it's like if you don't sleep for a few days. You can't think straight. You can't bounce your checkbook when you're tired. You need sleep. 
N is nutrition, E is exercise, U is unwind, and R is restorative sleep. O is optimizing cognitive and social activities. In other words, doing things with other people. We know that if we eat alone, we don't digest the food as well as if we eat with other people. Um, that interaction with other people. Laughing is so good for us. The Bible says laughter doeth good like a medicine. So if you can get with other people, you make them laugh. They make you laugh. It is amazing the healing that goes on in the body brought on by laughter. I do love that idea, right? Learning a musical instrument, learning a new language, learn Chinese. I'll bet you don't know one word of Chinese. And if you do, then go learn something else. I don't know. Um, a language that you know nothing about. I can speak English and I can speak Pig Latin. <laughs> Nobody, not too much of a need for Pig Latin. So I've not learned another language. Leading a project, volunteering, writing a book. Don't write a book. That's too much work. Playing cards or games with other people. It's a good thing. Any complex behavior needs to be something you enjoy, not something you're forcing yourself to do. Because if you do, you're not going to keep doing it. You need to enjoy doing it. So think about that. And it does cause... Uh, it, it, doing it increases brain growth, especially in the hippocampus, that very center of the brain that is most damaged by Alzheimer's. They used to think the brain could not regenerate itself. It's not true. We have found out that the hippocampus can, and that's what we want. It will even do it right up until the point of death. It's just amazing. The one thing chosen as the most important lifestyle change between nutrition, exercise, unwinding, restorative sleep, and optimizing cognitive and social activities, want to guess what it was? You should be able to. It's nutrition. So I'm going to tell you something. If you're really giving a lot of thought to what you eat, how you cook it, what you put in it, what you don't put in it, what's going in your belly all the way down to bring you that good health, you're probably going to be thinking about exercise. You're going to be thinking about relaxing, and you're going to sleep better. Oh, yeah. Gut health helps to regulate sleep. Uh -huh. If you're not sleeping good, you got some gut junk going on. I do. I have an ulcer, and I'm trying hard to heal it, and it will help me sleep better. So the most important thing of all of those is your nutrition. So start with that. Check out Dan Butner's books, The Blue Zones. Lots of good recipes there. So if, you, if we're busy thinking about all, all the different aspects of it, then pick one that will work for you. They said as far as exercising, choosing between walking or running, which would they choose was walking. Walking does, takes the stress out of your joints, that constant pounding running. Plus you also run the risk, a, a greater risk, running of falling and hitting your head. Mm-hmm or breaking an arm or a leg. Now, you can do any of that walking. I guarantee you I can. The last time I wore high heel shoes, cost us $350 in x-rays. So, girl's not good at staying upright. So give a thought to all of that. We know that people who eat a plant-based diet had higher cognitive states than those on a pescatarian diet, which is what I am. I eat fish. Those on a pescatarian diet had higher cognitive states than those on an omnivore diet, which is what most people are. So if you had to choose two foods to protect your brain, what are they? Greens, all kinds of green food, and beans. Think about that. Beans are cheap, too. Oh, my goodness. Well, I hope that gives you some good information because you know what? We don't want Alzheimer's. We don't want any kind of dementia. And following these ideas will help solve a lot of different kinds of dementias, too. So keep that in mind. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you on our next episode. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.